Hi, Achim from NSBase Explorers. Sorry for um, not being super active in the last couple of weeks. Um, some of you know I had a bit of surgery. I had a skin cancer issue on my nose. It's actually visible on some of the older videos. And um, so there was some surgery and um, yeah, actually it looked like crap and I didn't want to jump around in front of a camera like that. And um, that was one of the reasons why I also uploaded a couple of pre-produced clips from the summer. Anyway, all good now. And the um, uh, topic today is vet recompression. I had a couple of requests for that and a couple of people asking about these things. And I thought it's probably a good idea to talk a little bit about it. Generally speaking, it's a very controversial topic, um, very um, heavily discussed in a lot of different groups. And um, well, I mean, in the end, it's worth talking about it because sometimes, I mean, especially when you're somewhere in a, road, in a remote uh, location, you don't have access to a decompression chamber it might be the only solution. Um, if you want to read a little bit about it, there is a bit of, a, of, of the topic published. Um, actually, the Australian Navy was doing a bit of research and to my knowledge, that's most of what it is published out there. There might be newer publications that I missed. That's actually not the point of the video anyway. So the question that I received was, if I have experience with it, if I ever did it, and what I think about it. Generally speaking, if you can avoid it and still treat the person in a reasonable way, I would try to avoid it. That means if you have, if, if you have, let's say you have the chance to get the person down in the water or you have a chance to transport it to a um, decompression chamber within a reasonable time, I would always go for the chamber, obviously. Um, and it also heavily depends on the, on the state of the person. So if somebody has type 2 um, decompression sickness, it's obviously not an option to get the person back in the water. I mean, that recompression, again, talking about military, um, with a complete different supply chain and a complete different uh, logistical setup and probably a... Um, even if it's a, a diving bell or something like that, is a total different story than putting a diver with a regulator in the mouth back in the water. You always have to look at the logistical side of things, which means, do you have enough gas for that person? Do you have enough gas for somebody to go in the water with that person? How is the decompression status of the second person is it somebody that did the same dive and just came out from decompression or is it a support diver is the skill level of that person good enough to fulfill this task um, what is about the temperature um, especially after a long dive so somebody did a long dive did decompression ran into an issue, now you put the person back in the water, is that clever? And so on. So there is quite a few considerations to take into account. And in, I would say in most cases, the answer is no. So um, question if I did it, yes, I did it once. Um, in the Caribbean, the person that I was diving with was obviously not properly hydrated and um, after let's say a extended recreational dive so 40 meter range repetitive diving over a couple of days came out and had relatively mild type 1 decompression sickness symptoms so problems in the joints um, pain yeah but nothing like life-threatening, etc. So, um, obviously, hydration, oxygen, la la la, it did not really get better. But it also didn't get worse. 
and uh, the option would have been to call in for an emergency plane and then fly the person out two hours to another island nobody really knew or could figure out at that point if that chamber that should be there is in working order so it was a lot of ifs um, water was super warm i think 28 30 degrees celsius um, gas logistics were super easy we were on a site it was um, oxygen was available in huge quantities all good so um, after I think two hours or so when we figured out it doesn't really get better there's no chance to go to a decompression chamber we decided to go back in the water and this person and myself descended to nine meters in front of the pier on the on the center and um, she then started to breathe oxygen at nine meters and then was actually f basically following um, an Australian Navy table that we had access to which was a relatively short time at nine meters just sitting there stationary breathing oxygen and uh, then gradually coming up to six meters <coughs> and then further up so that the, the point is not the, the exact profile that we did but fact is that it worked very very well the person got out of the water and had no symptoms um, didn't dive for the next two or three days and then went back in normal diving and everything was good so it worked but it was a obviously all the circumstances were pretty perfect so there was no t uh, temperature issue there were plenty of gas logistics um, there was somebody in the water that had the ability to to perform and uh, the person itself was a very experienced diver so um, what's the risk there the risk obviously is a cns issue so uh, oxygen toxicity hit um, again we were in a very safe environment safe meaning not somewhere out in the ocean on a downline or something we were on a pier actually on a ladder um, so it would have been worst worst case scenario been relatively easy to get that person up in a safe way meaning you stop while there's a convulsion you um, have a regulator in front of the mouth slightly perched etc if you are ISE trained or similar you actually know the procedure um, so no f no free water ascend or along a line or something like that so it would have been very doable let's say and um, but still a decision that have has to had to be made between that person and myself and we agreed that yeah that's the best option and it worked out would I recommend that um, somewhere on a boat in the ocean like on a anchored on a wreck or something like that most probably not so that was the act the actual question that uh, popped up here uh, is that something i would do sitting here in my office i would say no of course if you're out there uh, and you run into an issue and there's no way to get into a chamber and you're in a bad condition and you're getting worse you might try it because the alternative probably is getting no treatment at all and probably getting worse and worse and worse but that's a decision that has to be made on site with all the people involved with all the people that have to take the responsibility and live have to live with that uh, responsibility afterwards because obviously things can go wrong <coughs> and there's a lot of factors that you can influence so picking up currents marine life god knows what there's uh, obviously a lot of things and then obviously it also depends on, on, on the type of dive and the type of symptoms so um, as I said we were coming up from a recreational dive and uh, it was very very obvious where the problem was person didn't probably drink enough it was uh, Caribbean it was hot so obviously not probably hydrated and it was relatively mild uh, type 1 symptoms so the person itself was in a, in a very stable condition and was able to handle herself so um, if you have severe type 2 issues and uh, probably um, getting worse and worse and worse then uh, it's maybe simply not possible to do so, so, uh, such a thing so um, I hope that answers the question a little bit um, 
also the question why there's nothing in, in the ISE manuals and uh, programs about recompression. I usually briefly talk about it when I'm teaching um, level one or level two. But yeah, actually nothing that uh, is recommendable. But uh, nevertheless, it's a very interesting topic. And uh, if you want to look a little bit further into it, I'll put a couple of links in the description of the video where there's um, interesting stuff to read. And um, yeah, I hope you like that. I wish all of you a Merry Christmas and uh, a happy and especially healthy New Year. And I hope that we um, can properly dive and train again in 2021. And yeah, all of you stay safe and I hope to see you in the next video.